Welcome back to WTOA 11 year day. They're in class, they're out of class, teachers are in school, but buses might not be able, be able to pick up your kids. Through this all, parents need to keep calm and calm their kids. Amy Allen is here from Toledo Public Schools with some ideas on how we could do just that. Good morning, Amy. Thanks for joining us today. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. You know, kids have been through the ringer the last couple of week, couple of years and parents as well, but we want to make sure that they're not falling behind in their schoolwork and in their education. So um, we're going to have some strategies or some things that parents can can help with their kids to keep them going and keep them learning. So, you know, one of the things about kids is they really are routine oriented, aren't they? Absolutely. Absolutely. So one of the things that we absolutely need to focus on for all of our kiddos is uh, routines and structure and predictability. There are some things that are we can't control. So we can't control the outbreaks. We can't control if someone has to quarantine, but we can control the way we run our day with our kids, regardless of whether they're in school, out of school, virtual, in person. It's really, really critical that our students have routine in their life. We do that internally. We have, you know, bell structures and uh, the kids know what to predict when lunch is and those kinds of things, but parents can do the same thing. Some simple things like uh, bedtime routines, which sounds like it might be for younger children, but it's so, so, so important for all students to have bedtime routines. Um, you don't often think about a bedtime routine for our preteens or teens or young adults, but it's as if not more important for those that population to have a bedtime routine. Mm -hmm. um, things like putting the electronics away at a particular time, shutting it down, mm -hmm. not letting kids take electronics to bed with them. It interferes with their sleep. It's, it's just critical that they have that time away from those um, distractions so that their bodies and their brains can rest. Mm -hmm. We also um, encourage families to have a schedule of activities because activities are changing daily. Right. <laughs> it's important for students to see in writing what the day is going to look like. Okay, so you can map that out with them. Maybe that becomes part of your morning routine or uh, or after dinner even, or whenever, just pick a, pick a time to say, this is what we've got coming up uh, for today or tomorrow. And um, yeah, it's, it's you know, we know things are gonna be unpredictable. And like you said, uh, we can't control some things, but if we go into the day with a, somewhat of a plan and some of a, somewhat of an idea of what to expect for the day, that really does help. Absolutely. There, there's no secret that when things are predictable and students and children know what to expect, they perform better. Um, and especially in this day and age when we can't predict everything, we have to be predictable about the things that we can control. Uh, so as much as we can, get that on paper, let students see what it looks like, let them have a voice in how their day is going to go, what their evening is going to look like. Um, and, and the other thing that is really, really important, especially again for our young adults and preteens, is having time built into your day to talk with your child. Mm -hmm. We often talk at our children, <clears throat> at right. our students, telling them what to do, when to do it, how to get there. Um, it's important to have those conversations with your student. And it, it's unfortunately kind of difficult some, sometimes to do that. A good conversation typically involves six back and forth turns okay so if you kind of put that rule in your head like if you're not talking at your children it means you're having six back and forth turns i'm saying something your student is saying something back to you and you're having that interaction it's really important because you know this day and age of electronics and unpredictable school schedules you just have to connect like yeah. that. It's helpful. It, it makes a difference. Absolutely, to know what's going on in their head and how they're feeling and everything as well. Uh, you know, and then if you do find out uh, your student is struggling, uh, you need some additional help, you know, where's the best place to start? Should they reach out to their teacher? Absolutely. School is not just about academics. We are here to serve the entire child. Um, at TPS, we have all sorts of uh, resources available. First and foremost, reach out to your child's teacher. If your child is struggling, the teacher needs to know so that you can collaborate and work together to address those. You can also reach out to the uh, principal if it's a bit of a, of a more global issue. And then also, if you visit our website, tps.org, there is a link there that you'll see for family resources during COVID. That, and those span academic resources, social-emotional resources, mental health resources, 
uh, every, everything that you may need will be there. We are here to help. Uh, we can't do this alone. You can't do this mm -hmm. alone. Families can't do it alone. So we do need to uh, get together and make sure that we are all on the same page and doing what we can to support students and families. Absolutely. We want them to uh, excel and succeed. So uh, Amy, thank you so much for joining us this morning. We appreciate thank it. You. Yep, appreciate take care. It.